Hello and welcome to another Toxicology Pills video. This one is about carbamazepine poisoning and as usual I'll put the sources I've used in the description below. Carbamazepine poisoning is potentially life-threatening and it's a very dangerous drug when taken in large doses. You also need to remember that carbamazepine has two formulations, immediate release and controlled release, and so you obviously got to know which one of those you're dealing with. Now, what's the toxic dose of carbamazepine? Well, anything greater than 20 milligrams per kilo is potentially dangerous, um, but in order to get to life-threatening levels, we're talking more like 50 milligrams per kilo as a life-threatening dose. Now, in terms of levels, if you've got a serum level, I'm only going to give you one number to remember, which is 40 milligrams per litre, and that is associated with life-threatening overdoses. And there are two kinds of effects of carbamazepine that you need to remember. One is uh, anticholinergic effects and the other is um, sodium channel blockade. And the reason it affects these two receptors is that uh, carbamazepine is structurally similar to amipramine, which is a tricyclic antidepressant. So it has actions on many of the same receptors that tricyclics do. Now, the other thing to remember is that carbamazepine only usually causes sodium channel blockade in quite large doses. So in terms of the central nervous system effects, we've got nystagmus, we've got ataxia, we've got agitation, coma, respiratory depression and seizures. Coming on to the GI effects, we've got vomiting, but we also get ileus and I'll come on to talk about the ileus in a second because it's important to think about. And finally, carbamazepine causes pharmacobazures to get formed, which are basically big blobs of tablets that haven't dissolved yet. And then in terms of cardiovascular effects we've got tachycardia hypotension and arrhythmias now this diagram is supposed to make the uh, ileus simple to understand so I'll, I'll walk you through it let's start at the top of the diagram where we've got gut absorption so you absorb a load of carbamazepine because you've just taken a big overdose that obviously gives you increased serum concentration that increases your toxicity from carbamazepine as i mentioned part of that toxicity is anticholinergic and that causes ileus to develop now that then slows gut transit and uh, decreases absorption from the gut, which then causes the serum concentration to fall, that causes the ileus to resolve, and that then again starts the uh, absorption up again and you get an increased serum level and then the cycle goes round and round and round, so you get this alternating periods of ileus and, and no absorption and then the ileus resolves and you get increased absorption again. So what's the treatment for carbamazepine? Um, overdose. Well, this is a good time to give charcoal and it can be given as multiple dose activated charcoal. And there's a few different ways you could give this, but one way you could do is 25 grams every two hours orally or by NG tube. Um, you've got to check for signs of ileus, uh, like reduced bowel sounds, abdominal distension or regurgitation of charcoal. Now, carbamazepine can be dialyzed. It's not the best candidate for dialysis because it's fairly protein bound which makes it hard to get out of the blood using a dialysis machine um, but dialysis does work and it's especially useful once ileus is set in and you don't have many other treatments you can do to get rid of the carbamazepine. Use IV fluids to treat hypotension for example boluses of 250 mils of any crystalloid such as Hartmann's and then because carbamazepine causes uh, both vasodilation and negative inotropy, you might want to use a peripheral vasopressor like uh, noradrenaline and that could be given at a dose of 0 0.05 uh, to 1 microgram per kilo per minute. Uh, or you could use adrenaline if you want more direct inotropy or if you really want to separate the two functions, you could um, use, say, dobutamine for inotropy and noradrenaline for the presser effect. Now this is a time where using echo is uh, helpful because then you can figure out whether the hypotension the patient's experiencing is because of vasodilation, in which case you choose noradrenaline, or because of uh, decreased cardiac contractility, in which case you might choose uh, adrenaline or dobutamine. Now if someone has sodium channel blockade, for example wide QRS complexes or a dominant R wave in AVR, then you might try doses of sodium bicarbonate and you'd give them in boluses of one millimole per kilo. Uh, the max you can give is six millimoles per kilo and there's a couple of caveats you need to remember with bicarb. So one is that you don't want the sodium to climb too high, you've got to try and keep it under 155 and you don't want to raise the pH too high either. Um, so keep the pH less than 7.55. And then finally, don't just keep giving bicarb if you're not getting any response because you don't want to bolus someone five vials of bicarbonate if actually they just got a bundle branch block uh, before they even took an overdose and you're just achieving nothing. 
In terms of the observation period for someone who's taken a carbamazepine overdose, if it's a big dose, so like 50 milligrams per kilo or greater, they need 12 hours of observation at least. Uh, and smaller doses, so less than 50 milligrams per kilo, can be safely observed for just six hours and then discharged, providing they've got a normal ECG and normal observations and are clinically well.